Question 1. Below are three statements about triangles. One of the statements is false. Tick the one false statement. So this is very important. Tick the one false statement. The angles in the triangle are equal to half the angle of a full turn. Now a full turn is 360 degrees. Half of a full turn is 180 degrees. So the angles are in a triangle are equal to 180. So therefore they're also equal to the uh, half the angle of a full turn. So that's true. But we're not going to tick it because we need to tick the false statement. The area of a triangle is height multiplied by base then half the answer. That is true, so we're not going to tick our box here. The angles in a triangle are equal to three right angles. So one right angle is 90 degrees, three would be 270, and the angles in a triangle are 180 degrees. So this is the false one and the one that we need to tick. Number two, look at the quadrilateral below. What is the size of angle X? So we need to figure out what the size of this angle here is. So quadrilateral is just a fancy word for four-sided shape. And what we'll first need to do is we need to figure out what this angle is. Because inside a quadrilateral, the three, sorry, four angles add up to 360 degrees, always. But we need to figure out this. And if we notice that this is actually a straight line. So this angle plus this angle are going to add up to a straight line, which is 180 degrees. So if we do 180, take away 98, it'll leave us with this angle because this one plus this one add up to 180 so zero take away eight we cannot do we need to borrow 10 take away is two seven take away nine we need cannot do we need to borrow 17 take away nine is eight and then zero so this is 82 degrees and now we've got three angles and we can add these three together to figure out what the missing angle is so we've got 82 add 82 add 95 so five add two add two is nine and then 8 at 8 is 16, add the 9 gives us 25. And then we can take that away from the 360, which is what the four angles will be. And it'll leave us with our missing x. So 0 take away 9 we can't do. Borrow 10 take away 9 is 1, 5 take away 5, 0, 3 take away 2 is 1. So the missing angle here is 101 degrees. Number three, a train leaves Belfast at 14.02 and arrives in Bangor at 15.27. How long does the journey from Belfast to Bangor take? Write your answer in the space below in hours and minutes. So simple timeline. And we've got our start time of the journey is 14.02. We've got our end time of the journey, which is 15.27. So we need to add on 58 minutes to get to the next hour, which is 1500 hours. <clears throat> and then add... 27 minutes to get to the time that we arrived in Bangor. So in total, we've got 58 add 27, which gives us 15, and then carry our 1, and then 5 add 1 add 2 gives me my 8. But it needs to be in hours and minutes. So if we take away the 60 from this, that'll be one hour away from it, and it'll leave us with how many minutes are left over. So it's one hour and 25 minutes. Number four, convert 0 0.07 kilometers into meters. So first off, we need to know what the conversion is from kilometers to meters, which is 1,000. 1,000 meters, one kilometer. So basically, how do we turn one kilometer into 1,000 meters? We have to times by 1,000, which is what we need to do to this number as well. So we're going kilometers to meters. So we'll go 0 0.07 times by 1,000. So more times than by a thousand, the decimal point moves down and it moves down one, two, three places because it's three zeros. So it moves one, two, three. Decimal point is now here. Didn't jump over anything there, so I need to put a zero in that gap and then get rid of the decimal point from here, everything else, and it leaves us just with 70 meters. Now, if you put in here zero, uh, what would it be? Zero, zero, seven, zero, point zero. That's still right. But you want to get in the habit of being able to just, this zero isn't worth anything, this zero isn't worth anything, and this one isn't worth anything. So it doesn't matter loads, but start to get in the habit of putting just the 70 in if you can. Number five, on a particular day, the temperature in Canada 
is minus 13 degrees and the temperature in Egypt is 15 degrees. How much higher is the temperature in Egypt than Canada? So we've got Canada around here, it's 13 degrees. We've got zero degrees in the middle and then we've got 15 degrees up here. So to get from minus 13 up to zero, all you're doing is adding 13. And then to get from zero up to 15, you're adding 15. So effectively what we're doing is we're just doing add 13, add 15. So if we do 15, add 13, it will give us the difference between, which is 28 degrees. Number six, an 11 year old is saving for a new bike. He's collecting all the change in his house and putting it into a piggy bank. In the piggy bank, they have 30 coins. These include one P, he's got eight, two P, he's got two, five P, nothing, 10 P, nine, 20 P, six, and 50 P, he's got five of those. If they shake the piggy bank upside down, he can get a coin to come out at random. So this is important at random. Look at the five outcomes below. Write the outcomes in order from least likely to most likely. So we need to look at each one of these individually, write it as a probability fraction, and then compare them and then put them in the order from least likely to most likely. So the first one, the coin is a 5p or a 10p. So 5p's, we've got nothing. 10p's, we've got nine. So all together, there's nine out of, and it tells us all together, it's nine out of 30. The coin is not a 1p, so it's not this, but it could be a 2p, uh, so yeah, a 2p, a 10p, a 20p, or a 50p. So 2p's, we've got two, and then we've got nine 10p's, and then we've got six 20p's and five 50p's. So we need to combine all these. So nine out of two is 11, six out of five is 11, so 11 out of 11 is 22 out of 30. Then we've got 50p coin, which we've got five of those, so it's a simple one, that one, five out of 30. And then we've got not a 2p coin. So it could be a 1p, which is eight. It could be a 10p, which is nine, a 6p or a 5p. So not a 2p. So we'll do eight or nine is 17 and then six or five is 11. Pop these two together, it gives us 28. So this is 28 out of 30. And then the coin is a 5p or a 2p. So 5p's, you don't have any. 2p's, you've only got two of them, so it's two out of 30. And now it's dead easy to see which is the least to the most probability-wise. So the first one has been done for us, so e is two out of 30, so we've done that one. Then we've got five out of 30, which is outcome C. Then we have outcome A, which is nine out of 30. And then out of the last two, we've got outcome B, which is 22 out of 30. And finally, D, which is 28 out of 30. Number seven, a pupil does six practice tests over the holidays. Below are the scores they have achieved for tests one to five. What was their score for test six if their mean average score for the six tests was 15? Now this seems like a tricky question, but basically what we're trying to find out is what test six score is if they have a mean average of 15. So I'm finding the easiest way to go through this and explain this is to talk about how do we first of all do we work out the mean average. Now we add together all the numbers and then we divide by the number of numbers that are there. So we would add here all these numbers and then divide by six and we would get an answer of 15. So this equals 15. So we actually need to treat this a bit like a function machine where we go back through to find out what it is. So we're gonna do 15, but instead of dividing by six, we're going to times by six because we need to do the opposite. So 15 times six is 90. Now we're here, but we need to go back through again. We're not gonna add, we're actually gonna take away. And we need to take away what we have got so far so adding these together away from the 90 to find out what the final score needs to be. So we need to do 11 plus 16 plus 12 plus 19 plus 14. And then take that away from the 90 and that leaves us what, with the score that she got for test 6 for the average to be 15. So if we do 19, add 11, that gives us 30. So 19, 11 is 30. Get rid of that, get rid of that. And if we do 16 add 14 that also gives us 30 
and then we're left with the 12. So if we add these together, 30 add 30 gives me 60, add 2 to 12 gives me 72. So I need to take that 72 away from this. So we're doing the opposite, we multiply and then we take away. So 90 take away 72, 0 take away 2 we cannot do, we borrow. 10 take away 2 is 8 and then 8 take away 7 is 1. So the test score that she would get in 6 if the mean average is 15 has to be 18. Okay, so then we've got part 2. Look again at the test scores above. What is the range of the scores for the 6 tests they completed over the holidays? Write your answer in the space below. So range is just the smallest take away the biggest. So we've got the smallest score and the score there was 18. We'll put that in. The smallest score was 11 and the biggest score was 19. So we do 19 minus 11, which leaves us with our 8. So we've got a first English section of this paper. So it's our first poem. Touched by an angel. We, unaccustomed to courage, exiles from delight, live coiled in shells of loneliness until love leaves its high holy temple and comes into our sight to liberate us into life. Love arrives and in its train come ecstasies, old memory of pleasure, ancient histories of pain. Yet if we are bold, love strikes away the chains of fear from our souls. We are weaned from our timidity in the flush of love's light. We dare be brave and suddenly we see that love costs all we are and will ever be. Yet it is only love which sets us free. Maya Angelou. So number one, based on your understanding of the above poem, tick the most appropriate word to complete the sentence below. The poet considers that something sets you free. Is it hope, fear or love? And if you actually look here, it says here, yet it is only love which sets you free. So the answer for number one, nine, sorry, would be love. Number 10, the phrase weaned from our timidity is used in verse three. Tick the word below, which has a similar meaning to weaned. It doesn't mean replaced, removed, resend, react. So if we look in verse three at where weaned is, we are weaned from our timidity. Now, can we replace any of these words with weaned? So, replaced from our timidity, removed from our timidity, resend from our timidity, react from our timidity. It's actually removed. So, weaned means to be removed from something. Number 11, look at verse 2 of the poem. Find the word closest in meaning to brave. So we need to find verse 2 and we're looking for the word closest in meaning to brave. And it's actually this word here, bold. Yet we are, if we are bold, basically, if you could also say, yet we are, if we are brave. So the word there is bold. Number 12, look at the following sentences below. Write each sentence out again without the use of apostrophes. So we've got our apostrophe here. We just need to rewrite it out without the apostrophe. I do not know what I was thinking. And then we have the one below. Everyone is hopeful. He will play again. Number 13, the noun memory is used in verse 2 in its singular form. Write the plural form of the noun in the space below. So we need to do the plural of memory. The plural of memory is memories. So one memory, two memories. So this one is spelt dropping the Y and adding IES, memories. Number 14, which one of the words below is used in verse 2 as a verb? Tick the correct answer below. Love strikes chains and fear. So we're looking in verse 2 to see which one is the verb. So verse 2, second one down. Love arrives. So love there is a noun. 
and in its train come ecstasies, old memory of pleasure, ancient histories of pain, yet if we are bold, love strikes away the chains of fear. So this here is actually the verb, it strikes, because it's something that we do. So it's the doing word, so strikes. So noun, verb, and then chains again, it's a noun, it's a thing, and in this instance, fear was actually a noun as well. 15. The words courage, coil, high and until are used in verse 1 of the poem. Tick the correct box to show whether each word is used as an adjective, noun, adverb and verb. Now for this one, I purposely said used in verse 1 because you need to look at the context that it is used in. So we'll look at courage, coiled, high, until. So we've got first of all in verse 1 we've got courage. So we look here, we are unaccustomed to courage. So courage here is actually noun because it's a thing. It's an abstract noun, but it's still a noun. And then coiled, live coiled. Coiled is something you do, so that would be a verb. And then we have until love leaves. So until in this sense, leaves is the verb. Until is actually an adverb in this sense. And then high the high holy temple would be the adjective. So this is one that you actually need to go back and that's look in the verse to check what it is. So sometimes you can look at these and you can just tell, but this one is a little trickier. So courage was our noun. Coiled was our verb. High was the adjective and until was the adverb. Number 16, the class is trying to work out the height of their classroom. They have been given the information that the volume of the air, so this is important, this is a volume question, in the air is 260 metres cubed. They have also measured the floor space, which is 6 metres by 6 metres. So what is the height of the classroom? So effectively what we've got, we've got a classroom where we've got the floor space, which is 6 metres by 6 metres. And then we need to figure out how tall the room is going to be. Okay, so six meters by six meters, the floor space, we can work out the area of this. So six by six would be 36 meters squared. Now for volume, we need to do the length by the width by the height. Okay, so we need to figure out what this is effectively. I'm going to call it X. So we know 36 meters, uh, 36 meters squared is the floor space. And we've done six times six and the whole of this. So we've got six times by six times by the number up here, with which I've put as x, equals 216. So we'll basically need to do the opposite of multiply by 6 and multiply by 6. So if we do 216 divide by 6, that will give us the first part. So 6 into 2 doesn't uh, go, carry the 2. 6 into 21 goes 3 times, carry the 3. And then 6 into 36 goes 6 times. So then we take this 36 and we just divide that. So we divide it by this. And then we just divide by this 6 as well. So 36 divided by 6 goes 6 times. So we've divided by 6 again, which means that this here would have to be 6. So the height of the room will be 6 metres squared. So take the two numbers that you've got and divide them by the total volume and it gives you what the height is. Okay. 17. Look at the function machine below. We've got our number in times by six divide by three and then our number out so here three goes in six comes out so we have to do it with seven and then do the inverse for 24 so seven times by six gives me 42 so number in is seven times by six is 42 then 42 divided by three goes 14 so the number coming out here will be 14 now we're going to go the number out and work our way back through so number comes out is 24 we need to do the opposite here. We need to times by three and then divide by six. So 24 times three. So 24 times three. Three uh, times four is 12, carry one. Three times two is six, add one is seven. So we're at 72 here. Then we need to divide this by six. So 72 divided by six gives us our 12. And that would be the number in. Now, the second part, or question 18, says look again at the function machine above, okay? Replace the two functions with one function. 
the new function machine must still give the same inputs and outputs write your answer in the box below so we need to put a function in here that replaces both of these so if you notice what's actually happening to each of the numbers is that the number is doubling each time so three to get to six your times them by two seven to get to 14 your times them by two and 12 to get to 24 your times them by two so the answer here would be times by two and if you cancel these down so if you have times by six and divide by three if you divide six by three what you've got is you've got times by two and that's what will be left okay so you can look at the numbers or you can use these two together so six divided by three is times by two and that's what you would be left with here number 19 look at the triangle square and rectangle below so we've got a triangle square rectangle the area of the rectangle and the square in total is the same as the area of the triangle so the area of the rectangle and the square is the same as the area of the triangle so what is the value of x on the triangle so we need to work out the area of these two and then that will give us the area of the triangle which means we can work out what x is so if that's one that'd be one so the area here is one centimeter squared this is four this is five so this will be 20 centimeter squares so the total of these two is 21 centimeter squares so the area of this triangle is 21 centimeters squares now we need to figure out what x is now what we do to work out the area of a triangle is we do the height times by the base and then divide by 2 so height times base and then divide by 2 equals 21 in this case so we need to do the opposite but we can actually we know what the base is so I'm going to replace the base with 6 so we'll do the opposite we're going back through so we'll do 21 instead of dividing by 2 we need to multiply by 2 so we've now got height times by 6 equals 42 so what do we times by 6 to make 42 you could do 6 into 42 which is 7 so the height here would be 7 and if you did 7 times by 6 get 42 and then half that you would get your 21 number 20 look again at the shapes above what is the difference in perimeters between the square and the rectangle so perimeter is the distance all the way around the outside so in our square all the sides are one so the perimeter of the square is four centimeters and then this is five so the other side will be five this is four the other side will be four so i do it where i add these two together which is nine and double that because we've got two of those which is 18. so what is the difference between these two numbers we just f subtract them basically 18 take away four is 14. Number 21, a garage measures 3 metres by 10 metres. Barney buys a lawnmower which measures 6 metres by 2 metres. What percentage of the garage floor is taken up by the lawnmower? So effectively what we've got, we've got our garage here. And that's 3 metres by 10 metres. And then we've got our lawnmower, which is 6 metres by 2 metres. So 6 metres by 2 metres, say it's that so this is six meters by two meters so we need to figure out what percentage of the garage floor is taken up by the lawnmower here so we need to find out the total area of the garage so if we do three times ten that'll give us thirty so that's the area of the garage thirty meters squared and then the area that is taken up by the lawnmower would be six meters by two meters six times two is twelve so effectively what we do is we just write it as a fraction so this is twelve over 30 and we need to reduce this down to see what percentage a lot more is of this so we need to, to turn this into a fraction that's out of 100 basically and that will be a percentage but we cannot turn 30 into 100 so i said it before there we actually need to reduce this down first to then turn it into 100 because our answer needs to be percent which means out of 100 so we reduce this down so what can i turn 30 into that's easier to deal with I can divide it by three actually and if i divide the bottom by three it means i need to divide the top by three so 12 divided by three is four a lot of you should know that four tenths is 40 percent if you don't then we would times by 10 to get from 10 to 100 and then times by 10 to get from 40 to sorry four to 40.
which would be 40%. So the answer there would be 40%. Number 22, patterns are formed from square tiles. The first three patterns in a sequence are shown below. How many tiles are needed to make the seventh pattern? So in pattern one, we've got one, two, three. Pattern two, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Pattern three, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So what's basically happening is we're adding three each time between the patterns. So we need to get to the seventh pattern. So I'm gonna write one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So pattern one is three, and then we've got six, nine, 12, 15, 18, and 21. So pattern seven will be 21 tiles. How many more tiles are needed for pattern eight, for the eighth pattern than the fifth pattern? So the eighth pattern, I'm just gonna add an eight on here, will be 24. So an eighth pattern, we've got uh, 24, and the fifth pattern, we've got 15. So all we need to do is 24, minus 15 and that will leave us with the difference so 4 take away 5 we cannot do borrow 14 take away 5 leaves us with 9 and then 1 take away 1 is nothing so the difference or how many more is 9 tiles now we've got our long comprehension text this will normally be about a page long and then there's questions that relate to it after here comes the runty one boomed the flesh lump eater Ho ho there, runty one, where is your splatch winkling away to you in such a hefty hurry? He shot out an enormous arm and grabbed the BFG by the hair. The BFG didn't struggle. He simply stopped and stood quite still and said, Be so kind as to be letting go of my hair, flesh lump eater. The flesh lump eater released him and stepped back a pace. The other giants stood around waiting for the fun to start. Now then, you little grub squiffler, boomed the flesh lump eater. We is all of us wanting to know where you is galloping off to every day in the daytime. Nobody ought to be galloping off to anywhere until it is getting dark. The human beings could easily be spotting you and starting a giant hunt. And we is not wanting that to happen. Is we not? We is not, shouted the other giants. Go back to your cave, runty one. I is not galloping to any human being country, the BFG said. I is going to other places. I is thinking, says the, f f says the flesh lump eater, that you is catching human beings and keeping them as pets. Right you is, cried the blood butler. Just now, as I, hear, as I is hearing him chittering away to one of them in his cave, you is welcome to go and search my cave from Frack the Bunt. The BFG answered, You can go looking in every crook and nanny. There is no human beans or stringy beans or runner beans or jelly beans or any other beans in here. Sophie crouched still as a mouse inside the BFG's pocket. She hardly dared breathe. She was terrified she might sneeze. The slightest sound or movement would give her away. Through the tiny peephole, she watched the giants clustering around the poor BFG. How revolting they were. All of them had piggy little eyes and enormous mouths with thick sausage lips. When the flesh lump eater was speaking, she got a glimpse of his tongue. It was jet black, like a slab of black steak. Every one of them was more than twice as tall as the BFG. Suddenly, the flesh lump eater shot out two enormous hands and grabbed the BFG around the waist. He tossed him high in the air and shouted, Catch him, man-hugger! The man-hugger caught him. The other giants spread out quickly in a large circle, each giant about 20 yards from his neighbour, preparing for the game they were going to play. Now the man-hugger threw the BFG high and far, shouting, Catch him, bone cruncher! The bone cruncher ran forward and caught the tumbling BFG and immediately swung him up again. Catch him, child cheer, he shouted. And so it went on. The giants were playing ball with the BFG, vying with each other to see who could throw him the highest. So that there's from the BFG, obviously. And we've got questions that relate to it after. So number 24. 
Which adjective used in paragraph one is closest in meaning to the description small and weak? Write your answer in the space below. So paragraph one, we're looking for a word which means small and weak. And if you actually read it, the adjective is runty. So runty means like the runt of the litter is the smallest and the weakest. So the adjective that they use here is runty. So now we need to do 25. Find the seven word phrase in paragraph one used to describe how the BFG reacted when the other giant grabbed him by the hair. Write your answer in the space below. So paragraph one, again. We've got it. The enormous grabbed the BFG by the hair. The BFG didn't struggle. He simply stopped and stood quite still. So if we need it to be um, seven words. So he simply stopped and stood quite still is the words that we're looking for. So he simply stopped and stood quite still. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And needs to be seven words. If it says seven words, make sure you make it seven words. Now 26, look at the words below, find the opposite meanings for these words. The answers can all be found in the last four paragraphs of the text. So we've got small, thin, slowly and brave. So last four paragraphs. So if we, as we're looking, so last four paragraphs are from here down to the bottom. So something that's the opposite to small, it's like big or something that relates to big. And if you actually look through, it's here twice. And if I find it, where are we? Enormous. The enormous mouths. So that would be the opposite for small. So we'll put in enormous. And if you think thin, the opposite to thin is thick. And that actually comes up when he's describing the thick sausage lips. So that will be thick. And then opposite to slowly be quickly so it's quickly here somewhere let's see where quickly is and if we go down here ah there it is there we've got our quickly and then finally we've got brave so the opposite to brave would be like scared or something like that and that's this word here terrified would be the opposite so we'll put that in there if I'd. Number 27. The simile Sophie crouched as still as a mouse is used in the text. Find the other simile that is used in the same paragraph and write it in the space below. So simile is whenever something is like or as something else. And the other simile is this one here. Like a slab of black steak when he's talking about the giants when she's talking about the giant's tongues actually so we've got like a slab of black steak okay the giants talk getting their words and letters mixed up for example you is welcome to go and search my cave from frack to bunt with frack to bunt meaning front to back what does the BFG mean when he says, you can go looking into every crook and nanny? Write your answer in the spaces below. So what he's done is he's basically switched around the words and got them up a little bit mixed up. So to every nook and cranny is what the answer would be there. So number 29, based on your reading of the whole passage, tick each of the statements below. True, false or don't know. In each case, tick the best answer. So the BFG struggled when the giants grabbed him. Now, from this, the second question we did in this actual text, it talks about he just stood there and he didn't struggle. So that there is false, because he didn't struggle at all. Sophie was hiding in the BFG's pocket. And if we look up here, it actually tells us where she was hiding. So Sophie crushed as still as a mouse inside the BFG's pocket. So yeah, she's inside the pocket. So that means that that is actually true. So, so the other giants were twice as old as the BFG. 
So we actually look, it doesn't actually say anything about them being twice as old. What it does do is it talks about them being twice as tall. So we don't actually know if they're twice as big, but we know they're not. So this one here doesn't say about them being twice as old, they might be, but we don't know if they are, so that would be don't know. And then finally, the other giants were scared of the humans. Now, with this, if you read, basically they're kicking off with the BFG because he, they think that he's going to be spotted by the human beings. And whenever the human beings then come, they'll not be very happy. And it says here, uh, could easily be spotting you and starting a giant hunt. And we is not wanting that to happen, is we not? So they don't want the humans basically to come and start hunting for them. So that there shows us that, yes, true, the other giants were scared of the humans. And that's the end of the paper.